Well, now, what an absolute pleasure it is to have Dr. Courtney Warren returning to the show. Courtney, welcome. Thank you for having me. It is just a pleasure to be back. Thank you. And it's been, uh, well, it's been a few months. So we, we spoke last around August or something last year about a different topic. But the topic of today revolves around the forthcoming publication of your brand new book, the title of which is Letting Go of Your Ex, CBT Skills to Heal the Pain of a Breakup and mm -hmm. Overcoming Love Addiction. There's a few key words there in those titles and subtitles. So the topic is Romantic Relationships and the love addiction. And you're a clinical psychologist. You know about this topic. You deal with the pain that people suffer and feel because of breakups in, rom in romance and relationships. And this term, the love addiction, I'm very curious about that. I can actually relate to some extent. Courtney, your book, uh, of which I was uh, privileged to have an advanced copy, begins with uh, a quote from Tao philosopher Lao Tzu. New beginnings are often disguised as painful endings. Why did you begin your very first chapter with that quote? Because the journey of intimacy and the journey of relationships is really the journey of understanding yourself. And so often in life, we go through really painful experiences that feel incredibly adverse. They feel hor horrendous, really. They feel horrible to go through. But oftentimes, as you emerge from it, you're able to look back and say, wow, I actually learned a lot. I actually transformed. I actually can see a gift in this experience that I went through called life or called the breakup or called whatever it was that you went through. And I think keeping that in perspective is so critical when you're going through something like a bad breakup, because in the moment, it can feel like your whole life is ending. It can feel like the most devastating, heart-wrenching, horrible experience that you can imagine. And oftentimes when we're in that emotional place, we forget about the big picture of our life and that this is not actually the entirety of your life. This is just one moment of it. And so if you can remind yourself that sometimes the things that seem the worst in the moment in the grand scheme of things actually benefit you greatly, it will help you persevere through it. Now, nobody enters a, perm a, a, a meaningful relationship, be it uh, marriage or, or outside of marriage, but long-term partnership. No one enters into a love relationship with an expectation that there's going to be pain at, uh, because of breakup. However, it's a part of life. I don't know what the statistics are in America, but here in Australia, approximately half of all uh, marriages end in divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so about the same. It's the same? About the same, yeah. Estimates are about the same. So... Uh, and I'm divorced and remarried, so I understand what that process can be like. What do you see uh, in your work as a clinical psychologist and in your research and preparation for writing this book? What do you see as the biggest hurdle to get past the pain of a breakthrough, of, of a breakdown, breakup, I should say, breakdown, breakdown. The breakdown, breakup. Yeah, that's all interchangeable, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you, yes. You know, I think that oftentimes, culturally, we enter into relationships believing in an absolute fantasy. And this, to some degrees, go, goes into what we were talking about last time, because one of my expertise areas is self-deception uh, and culture and cross-cultural competency. And so one thing that I see a lot in people is when you fall in love, which is kind of the core of love addiction, the construct of love addiction, you create a fantasy world that involves this perfect partner that is making you feel so magical. They're like the best smelling perfume you've ever smelled. They're intoxicating. You want to be around them all the time because you feel so good when you're together. And when you're not with them, you're thinking about them, right? It's this intoxicating experience. And what happens is we make a whole host of conclusions about ourselves and about love relationships and about our partner because it feels so magical. And unfortunately for most of us, a lot of what we believe early in relationships is really false. 
about ourselves, about our partner, and about the nature of romantic relationships themselves. And that gets us in a lot of trouble because at some point, even if you have a really successful relationship, you're probably going to have those moments where you're like, oh my gosh, is this what I signed up for? Is this what a relationship looks like? Is this who my partner is? Is this what my reaction is? And it's going to be disappointing because our expectations are really flawed. Does uh, the end of a relationship mean the end of a relationship? Or uh, have you seen any comeback experiences where a, a relationship that appears to have broken down and both parties are in pain and suffering has been able to mend and the relationship recover? Absolutely. I think you can recover. I think a breakup doesn't inherently mean that you are finished for good. Mm. And I think one of my biggest examples of that that I see in couples is particularly when you have two people who really want to be together. And for many reasons, a plethora of reasons, it's not working, but they're both willing to do the work to try to make it happen because they want to be together, you can break up or separate or take some time and then come back together and say, I am willing to change to make this work. And I think that is possible. What I worry about, and I'll give you an example, oftentimes that happens with affairs. So for example, a lot of people will come into therapy because there was an affair or some sort of transgression that really deeply cut. And Although you might think the immediate reaction would be, we're breaking up, we're getting divorced, we're done. Oftentimes, just like our quote, you can use this experience of an affair to unpack what was not working about your relationship for each person involved. And if you can get over the pain and the hurt and the deception and whatever other constructs are mixed up in there, you actually can oftentimes come to a place where you actually have a much more honest, much more real, much different dynamic between you that may form into a new relationship. The important part about this is that the old relationship probably needs to be over and a new relationship needs to develop. It's just that the new relationship is with the same people in in a change-based focused dynamic, if that makes sense. It makes makes sense. Yeah, what I was going to say is my worry oftentimes for people who are in a breakup, but they don't want to be breaking up, you will oftentimes hear them mired in this belief that they can make their partner change or that they're going to come back. And I think that that can be really damaging in addition to really untrue much of the time. And when that is the case, I think it's imperative that we hammer home whatever the reality is for you today. So don't focus on whether it's going to happen in the future or whether they're going to come back to you. We don't know that. All we know is that today you're not together. So let's start healing from that perspective. And if something changes over time, we'll figure it out as we go. Let's talk about the love of addiction or the addiction to love. First of all, what comes to mind is there's that phrase that we hear, uh, he or she or they have an addictive personality are some people who have well is there such a thing as an addictive personality you know it's such a complicated and controversial question actually in psychology certainly we have a really strong emerging neurobiological base of data that suggests that there are people who are probably more predisposed to addictive tendencies Um, and whether you focus on that as a personality trait or a state of being or something that morphs into a trait because of your environmental conditioning and your experiences is a bit more of a debated topic. But I think there are people who are more prone to become addicted to something, whether it's a substance or a behavior or a person. Um, And some of that is probably based on their upbringing, and some of that is probably based on genetics and biology. And CBT is in the uh, subtitle of your book. The book, it 
being titled Letting Go of Your Ex, by the way. It's going to be released on February 1st, 2023. And as of that date, it'll be available, I'm told, at uh, bookstores and uh, Amazon and will also be available at Dr. Courtney's own website, the link of which is in the show notes. CBT uh, skills to heal the pain of a breakup and overcome love addiction. Let me just uh, create a, a hypothetical. You're uh, somebody who is in the middle of the pain of a breakup and you're someone who's read your own book and they've just put it down. What's the key positive, inspirational, motivational, I've got some hope here message that, that you've just got from reading your own book? That you can actually do things to heal and transform through this. That even if you feel horrible right now, like your life is over, like there is no meaning anymore, like it's empty inside, there are actually skills that you can learn and practice to overcome the pain you're feeling right now and emerge as a transformed version of yourself. And if I can really get that message across to people that there is hope and that it takes a lot of deliberate effort, those two things combined are what are going to propel you forward. And that is really, there is hope and you can do things differently. And the book gives you many, many, many tools that you can learn and practice to start moving forward. When you first studied CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, what were your initial reactions? Did you feel like this was, uh, this is the answer to people's problems, this form of therapy? I wouldn't say that probably quite as strongly. I actually am pretty integrative in my own psychotherapeutic practice, um, such that I think all therapeutic orientations, for any of you who know a lot about psychology, have strengths and weaknesses. What I would say is that CBT is very, very evidence-based, and it's incredibly effective at changing behavioral and thinking patterns that keep you stuck. And in that way, CBT is incredibly healing and, and it can be used with a wide range of psychological problems, symptoms, issues. What I was struck the most by when I learned how to do CBT and what cognitive behavioral therapy really is based in, which is the relationship between how you think, how you want to act and how you feel and how those three things are intertwined. Mm -hmm. What I was most struck by is how much we lie, because once you start analyzing the way that we think and all of those thoughts that run through our minds at any given moment, it is unbelievable how much of it is flawed. And the more we let ourselves engage in that flawed thinking without challenging it, the more we are going to be emotionally in trouble and behaviorally acting in ways that generally don't serve us very well. And so from my perspective, that is a massive contribution of CBT to the world, to all of us who can use it and practice it and change. Um, and in that vein, probably my favorite or one of the main CBT skills that I use with people immediately is called radical acceptance, which at its core is trying to actually admit the, the facts of the situation that you are in, stare them down in their face and remove some of the affect from them so that you can actually start to come to terms with the truth instead of trying to deny it, trying to distract yourself from it, trying to do anything to create an alternative reality that keeps you stuck, which is what most of us do. And I think the more you can be honest with yourself, the more power you have, right? Which was part of the conversation I think we had last time. So part of this book and part of my efforts with anyone who reads it is to help you feel grounded in your own skin again, to help you know your value, which is actually exactly the same, whether you're dating your ex or not. You have the exact same value and to help you recognize that you actually have a great deal of self-efficacy. You actually can make choices that lead you to whatever life it is that you want to live. 
And so I think that is a really amazing part of CBT that we can integrate into a breakup situation that will serve you very well. You know, there's a hook in what you've just said there, uh, Courtney, for me, and that is uh, uh, in relation to one's identity in a relationship and then out of the relationship feeling that the identity being in the relationship is gone and I'm without an identity anymore and I've lost my own a sense of self-identity, self-worth. And I think what you've just described there covers that perfectly. The new book from Dr. Courtney Warren, clinical psychologist, Letting Go of Your Ex CBT Skills to Heal the Pain of a Breakup and Overcome Love Addiction. Well, I can just imagine, Courtney, that this book is going to be a number one bestseller. It's going to be very uh, popular. It's going to be in demand. Unfortunately, we worldwide, as you could tell us better than I can tell you, are in the midst of um, terrible, tough times emotionally, psychologically. People are really struggling in a lot of ways. Relationships and marriages have suffered during the last two to three years with uh, what went across the world. And I think this will be a book for its time out in February 2023. Dr. Courtney Warren, do you have a final parting uh, message, word, a quote, another quote that you like that you can leave with our viewers and listeners? Oh, know thyself. Know thyself is probably the motto that I use in everything that I do professionally and personally. What I would say is if you are in the midst of a really bad breakup, the first place you're going to go to heal is to look in the mirror. Know thyself, know thyself, know thyself. Because the more you understand who you are, why you're having the reactions that you're having, and work with that, the more you can create the life that you really want to live moving forward. And so that would be my biggest goal for you and for myself and for every human in the world, because really understanding yourself at the deepest level possible is the mechanism through which you will create the most fulfilling life for you. Know thyself. Thank you, Dr. Courtney Warren. I love it. And I love speaking with you and we appreciate you giving your time on the Comeback Coach podcast to tell us a little bit about your upcoming book. And to the viewer and to the listener, uh, you'll see that uh, there's a link in the show notes below. Uh, you can find out more about Dr. Kurt Courtney Warren and her work. And uh, there'll be a link also on, I do know, on Dr. Courtney's website, but elsewhere come February 2023, where you can um, search and find and purchase, if you so desire, uh, her new book, letting go of your ex. So for now, this is Mike Searles of the Comeback Coach podcast signing off until next time.